Hey everyone, Doug here, Doug Johnson Productions, Orem, Utah. So, uh, if you watch many of my videos, uh, you probably realize that I talk about SDI video a lot. And I, I throw around some terminology that some of my viewers may not understand, or may not be familiar with. So, in an attempt to try and rectify that, and put this video together, where I talk about what is SDI, what, is, what do I mean by 3 gig SDI, what do I mean by level A, what do I mean by level B, and so forth. So, Try and keep the video short, but there is some history here that we kind of have to explain a little bit in order to understand what these technologies are. So, um, so for, if you're just joining me for the first time, I uh, run a company in Orm, Utah called Doug Johnson Productions. We do live event video production, uh, multi-camera, so things like sporting events, concerts, uh, business conferences, those sorts of things. And uh, I have this video YouTube channel where I talk about the equipment that I use, I do a few how-tos here and there and uh, just kind of general information about about the business so um, thanks for joining us I appreciate it so all right so first of all what is SDI SDI stands for serial digital interface it's basically the digital standard that was released in the late 80s to allow video to be sent over uh, copper cables so uh, digital meant that the signal was cleaner than what they've been using previously with analog uh, it also had the advantage that it incorporated things like uh, audio inside the signal, uh, different data streams, uh, time code, that kind of thing, all on one cable. And so the amount of cabling that had to be used was reduced. You got better, higher quality. Everything about it was basically better than what, what, the, what they'd been doing. So um, SDI was, is, was a very cool innovation. Um, and it was, as high def became uh, something that was going to be coming around you know we're getting to the point where uh, high def was under development and was going to be released uh, there was a variation of sdi called hd sdi stands for high definition serial digital interface um, that was that's basically the standard that's used in broadcast and that standard is still used today and it's still very very much alive and relevant to this day um, it's based on the video standards that we're familiar with and some ones that we that we still use so if you get cable or satellite, have an over there antenna, whatever, the video that we receive via those is 720p at either 50 or 60 frames per second, depending on where you live, or 1080i at 25 or 30 frames per second, or 50 or 60 fields per second, also depending on where you live. So those are the video standards that are covered by HD SDI. Now, uh, since those standards were first uh, released, um, we've decided that we wanted to support 1080 progressive 1080p video in addition to the 1080i. Uh, interlace was more or less okay in the days of CRT. You know, uh, the way the interlace is drawn, basically with, they're drawing every other line of the display each time the screen is painted. So the first time it's the odd numbered lines and it comes back and fills in the even numbered lines. And that allows you to update the screen 60 times per second without requiring all of the data bandwidth of updating every single line every time the screen is painted. And so hey, the interlace video formats that we used for standard definition up through 1080i were always a bit of a compromise, but they worked okay on the CRT tube TVs that we had at the time. Now, since that time, we've moved most, almost entirely over to progressive screens. So LCDs, plasmas, OLED, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, they're able to be to update the full screen every time they have enough bandwidth. They've got sufficient electronics inside in order to do that. And so, uh, early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, uh, importance of 1080p became a lot more important. Or 1080p, 1080p became a lot more important. Yeah, but the problem is 1080p requires more bandwidth, and so it doesn't fit within the bandwidth available with an HD SDI signal. So they needed a new standard in order to accommodate that. And what we have at that point is kind of a bifurcation. So initially, the first implementations of doing a 1080p video, and when I say 1080p, I'm talking about 50 or 60 frames per second, not just, not just 24 or 30, which can be accommodated by HDSDI, but 60 frames per, 50 or 60 frames per second. Um, so it requires, obviously requires more bandwidth than 1080i signal. And so what they did is they took two HD SDI signals and split the video over two over the two signals. So uh, one one line got half the video information, the other line got the other half of the video information. So every time you'd run a video video signal from your camera to your routing switcher, 
uh, to your switcher, to your display or whatever. If you're doing 1080p in those days, you were running two cables, taking up two inputs on your switcher, taking up two outputs on your routing switcher, uh, etc. So not exactly convenient, but it worked. You know, it allowed you to send a 1080p signal over equipment that you already owned. Uh, the displays had to change, the cameras had to change, but all the, the signal routing equipment still worked. Um, so that that kind of became the way of doing things for a while, but it's very inconvenient because, again, you're running two ca two cables for every camera, you're taking up two inputs on every routing switcher, etc., etc., so uh, not an efficient way of doing things. And that's where 3 gig SDI came into play. It's called 3 because it's 3 gigabits per second. HDSDI is 1.5, so this 3 gig is twice the data rate of, of HDSDI. And, and 3 gig SDI is able to carry a full 1080p signal at up to 60 frames per second. Um, however, there were some competing ways of doing that. So uh, one of the ones, which is kind of is more common in the, the segment that the segment of video production that I work in, it's called Level B. Tec more technically, it's called 3 gig Level B Dual Link. And it's called that because effectively it is taking that dual link HDSDI that was previously sent over two cables, combining it into one, and then sending the one down the wire. So you have one cable, but it's really a signal that's been split up into uh, effectively separate fields, uh, and then combined into a signal signal, and then sent down the cable. So it's a little bit awkward. So internally what you've got going on, you've got this data stream coming in, all your 1080p data, that's split up into two separate separate data streams which are then linked together in two, well, two different links and sent over a single cable. So a little awkward but but it works and it's kind of what we standardized on for the budget video production market. So my Blackmagic equipment is primarily based on 3 gig level, level B. My Sony cameras operate on level B. My Blackmagic cameras operate on level B. A lot of equipment in the budget segment uses the level B. Now, there's another standard out there. It's called 3 gig level A. And effectively what they've done there is they've skipped out on all that dual link stuff and they just take that raw data stream that's coming in, all the video, all together, in sequential format from top of the screen to the bottom, left to right, and just formatting it the same way that they did HDSDI and sending that down the cable. So, the net result of that is that we've got two different standards that are not compatible with one another. You can't take a camera that outputs level B and hook it to a switcher that only supports level A and expect to get a picture. And the, the switcher won't recognize the video signal that's coming in. It's expecting a different format altogether. The same thing in reverse. So a, a, a camera that does 3 gig at level A can't be connected to a switcher that only supports level B. Fortunately, the, in, in, the, in the world today, most of the equipment that we're getting access to these days will support both level A and level B. So uh, Blackmagic, I mentioned them earlier. So their switchers with their current model switchers were, up to, were given a firmware update, I think it's two summers ago, or it's a year and a half ago basically, that allowed them to support uh, level A in addition to their native level B. So the switcher internally says, hey, that's a level A sig signal stream, it's able to decode it properly and, and display it uh, and use it as it normally would. Um, that, however, is not the case with everything. So, uh, those again, those who pay attention to my channel know, know that I use the Blackmagic Design Fiber systems, uh, and their fiber converters only support level B, and so I can't hook a level A camera to one of those converters without conversion, or the device will not recognize the signal. Now, I should clarify here that this only these rules, this, these issues only apply when you're shooting. 1080p, 60 frames per second, with a big asterisk here, I'll get to in a minute. So if you're shooting 1080i, you're shooting 1080p at 30 frames per second or less, no issue because it's not, that's not 3 gig, that's, that's just H, HD SDI, and no compatibility issues there. So, now in terms of uh, conversion, there are several devices out there that do do conversion. Uh, I talked about a couple of them in my last video, the HD no, sorry, the SDI to HDMI converter video. I had two, com two products there from Decimator Designs, the MDLX and the MDHX, which will do the conversions both directions. So you have a level A camera, you want to up to a level B monitor or vice versa. It takes care of the conversion. Um, 
no difference in quality between the two whatsoever. They, the image quality on both of them is absolutely identical. The, the signal, the actual pixel data between the two is actually identical. And there, it's just, the only difference is the way that the, the signals are organized into a data stream and sent down the cable. Now that said, conversion between the two does introduce a bit of delay because with the level B, it's only sending, it's sending this line and then this line and then this line and then this line. In order to build the entire uh, frame of video, you have to basically buffer two scan lines worth of data in order to output one scan line for level A. So, bottom line there is, if you're in a gen-locked environment, you can't do conversion from A to B or B to A without losing your, your sync. And so, it's something to be aware of. If you're dealing with an environment where you have frame syncs in your switcher and your cameras are not synchronized, can kind of convert freely between the two formats and have no issue whatsoever. Um, so, um, now the one caveat that I mentioned a minute ago, uh, three gig is also used to add additional capabilities to the original HDSDI. So, uh, a couple in instances of that. Um, one, for example, uh, normal video is what we call a 422. I'll do a separate video on that someday, what that, what, what that means. But suffice to say, there are twice as many pixels worth of brightness information as there are color information. Uh, so the color portion of the picture is actually at a, a, a lower resolution than the black and white portion. Uh, if you want to get a video signal where it's a one-to-one -one relationship, so every brightness pixel information, byte, word, whatever, has a corresponding color information, that's when you go to what we call 444 video. 444 video requires more data than 422, and that pushes past that 1.5 gigabit per second limit of HDSDI. So if you want to do 444 video, that's when you also get pushed into 3 gig uh, SDI as well. Uh, another one instance, and, uh, and I've, I haven't personally encountered this, but uh, you can also do transparency information, what they call, what they call an alpha channel. On SDI, and, that, and when you do that, again, it's more inf more data that's being introduced into the data stream, and so you have to go from if you're shooting an HD SDI, you have to go to 3G SDI in order to include that alpha transparency information in there as well. So there are some other instances as well, but those are kind of the basics. Now there is one other flavor of three three gig SDI that I haven't mentioned. And that's what we call three gig SDI level B dual stream. And this is what, again, one I've not personally encountered, but it does exist. It's just not very common. Uh, it's basically where you take two separate video streams. It could be two cameras. It could be a camera and a recorder. It could be whatever. And as long as you synchronize those up, you can send those two video signals, HD SDI video signals, over a 3 gig SDI uh, transport, so cable, whatever. It's just a way of combining two video signals into one cable. And one of the more common uses for that uh, would be left and right views in a 3D uh, video. So you get the stereoscopic view by sending video over, over one single cable. Again, not common, but it does exist. Okay, with all of that out of the way, uh, three gig level A, level B. When I say level B, again, referring to just dual link, not compatible, can be converted, no differences in quality between the two. There are two other emerging standards, or two other uh, official standards, uh, 6 gig SDI and 12 gig SDI, which are basically like level A for, for 3 gig, but, but faster. And so 6 gig is able to accommodate Ultra HD video, uh, so 3840 by 2160 at up to 30 frames per second. And then 12 gig SDI is able to accommodate uh, 3840 by 2160 at up to 60 frames per second. Uh, there is one emerging standard that's still in development, you probably will be able to guess, it's called 24 gig SDI. And that allows you to do up to 120 frames per second at, at Ultra HD resolutions. So uh, 24 gig is not officially a standard yet, it's still in development. But the other official, the standards, 12 gig and, and 6 gig are, are official, they were ratified in, tw in 2015. Um, Okay, and with all that said, 6 gig SDI, pretty uncommon. Blackmagic Design is one of very few adopters of the standard. Um, because most people moving to 4K just want to go all the way up to 60 frames per second and not do that interim step of just 30 frames per second. Uh, with that said, though, my trailer, I built my entire trailer around 6, 6 gig SDI. Everything in my trailer supports 6 gig, so I can do 4K video up to 30 frames per second. 
If I need 60 frames per second, I've got to drop down to 1080p. Not a, not a huge deal breaker. Most people can't tell the difference. In terms of distributing 4K, not a lot of options for doing that just yet, especially with live streaming. But anyway, so yeah, so we've got SDI, uh, HD SDI, 3 gig SDI, 6 gig SDI, 12 gig SDI, and 24 gig SDI is coming. 12 gig is actually becoming fairly standard um, in terms of producing 4K. Um, everything from 3 gig and above can be sent over lower bit rate by splitting the signal up. So you can take a 3 gig signal, send it over dual link, HD SDI. You can take 6 gig, split it over 2, 3 gig SDI, and that's dual link. Uh, 12 gig can be split over 2, 6, or 4, 3s uh, in order to give you the full resolution over 4 cables and compatibility, again, with older equipment if, you, if need be. So anyway, so that's kind of SDI in a nutshell. Um, if you have any other questions about it, be sure and ask. I mean, I'm not going to claim to be an SDI expert, uh, but I do understand a lot of the different standards well enough that I can probably answer most of your questions. So leave the questions down there below. Also, be sure to like, share, subscribe. I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you find this video interesting and uh, wish to help uh, contribute to the channel, we do have a Patreon account. And I'll link to that again down there in the description and also up here. Uh, so... Uh, let you know what you get so patron patrons receive access to private videos i publish m actually more videos on the private channel than i do here on the public channel and also at, at the next level up you get access to once a month live q a sessions with me so and the rewards are definitely worth it and all contributions that are made via patreon go directly to supporting content for the channel it doesn't go into my pocket doesn't go into my company so uh, any contribution that you can make is, is very much appreciated there. So again, if you have questions, comments, suggestions, smart remarks or otherwise, leave those down below. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day.